yeah, for my kids, they're still pretty little. And I thought the same thing. I mean, my son broke his wrist this summer, literally just running and tripping and falling, right? So the last <laughs> thing I need is for him to get on, on one of those hoverboards and trip and fall. But, uh, but yeah, Amazon has a, a variety of them. They, they seem to fit universally across those things. And um, yeah, so now he can, he can have uh, an electric go-kart and my daughter can ride it. She's only four. So I, I don't have to worry about the four-year-old, you know, trying to do too much and keep up with her big brother. Um, they can both just sit on it and ride it and get a lot more use out of it. So I'll report back after they unbox it and start using it. Um, Sounds but, cool. Yeah. And they should get it just in time for there to be a ton of snow outside and then they can't use it. So <laughs> maybe, ti maybe timing was my only oversight on this one. Awesome. All right. Well, I think everybody has joined. So let's dive right in. This is webinar five of our holiday unwrap series. It was the night before. So everyone getting ready for their final prep and last quick wins. Um, just to get all of the boring housekeeping stuff out of the way first, I am Jeremy Horowitz. I will be your host and moderator for today's panel. I run, part, run partnerships at Dacity. We are an actual insights platform for leading DDC brands. Um, just some quick things to remember. So everybody's gonna be on mute. So if you have any questions, there'll be a Q&A at the bottom. I also just kicked off a poll. So we would love to hear your feedback on what you're most excited for for this holiday season. Um, if you have any problems or any technical issues or you can't hear, please just throw it in the chat. Uh, Nikki and Sarah from my team are on to help with any issues or anything that pops up. And just so everybody remembers that this session will be recorded and we'll send out a replay afterwards. So definitely please stay. We're going to have a really fun, lively, engaging debate uh, just from all of the pre-call pre stuff that we've had. And uh, this is going to be a really fun one. Um, but you will, if you do want to watch it later, have that for your reference. And so probably what everybody is here for and to get to the good stuff, let me introduce you to our panel. So I'm just going to go from top left through um, and we'd love for everybody to introduce themselves. So John, why don't you kick us off with what you're working on at Rebuy? Totally. Yeah. My name is John. I'm the co-founder of uh, Rebuy. Rebuy is a market leader in the space of personalization. So when you launch on Shopify, you're able to get a beautiful theme, especially if you work with an agency, you get a homepage, product page, shopping cart, checkout. But inherently that theme is not intelligent by default and it's not personalized based on which user uh, is on the site, where they came from, what products they're looking at, that sort of thing. So we think about uh, Rebuy as a supercharger for the online store, and we have a whole suite of merchandising tools um, that deliver on that promise. Awesome. Adam, why don't you tell us what you got cooking up at Route? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, so Route is focused on the post-purchase experience. So we are giving brands control even when you have to hand off those shipments to a carrier to deliver them to your customers. Uh, research has shown that customers are really particular about the shipping and delivery stage of e-commerce, that even if you nail product discovery and the purchase experience, if something goes wrong with the carrier or that package gets stolen, it reflects poorly on the brand, unfortunately. And so we've got some awesome tools to be able to give you control. Um, the one you may have heard of more commonly is that we offer a self-service shipping insurance that customers can just add on at checkout. So if their order is lost, damaged, or stolen, they can get it replaced with just three or four taps of their phone within 24 hours. So really offloading customer support for brands, um, thrilling customers with an amazing experience um, when things do go wrong, and ultimately just preserving uh, brands in the minds of customers um, so that, you know, if when those things go wrong, um, things is a, a smooth operation for the customer as they are for the brand itself. Very cool. Allison, why don't you give us an overview of what you're working on in Attentive? Hey guys, Allison Kelly here, head of growth strategy. Uh, Attentive is a text message marketing platform uh, catered towards retail and e-commerce brands. Uh, we've been around for four and a half years now. We work with over 2,400 brands uh, here in the United States and are a leading category and channel provider to reach consumers at the end of the day. Um, I often compare this to conversations with my teenage daughter who's 17 she only texts me these days to chat with me. And if you look at your own behavior on how you engage with your family, your friends, it's likely gonna be in the text messaging app. So it makes a lot of sense these days for brands to wanna to connect to consumers just like you and I in that app because it is one of the top used apps on your phone. I challenge all of you, go look at your Sunday usage reports that you get delivered if you're an Apple user every single week. It'll probably terrify you, not just on how much time you spend on your phone, but also too, how far up that text app actually sits when you look at your app usages too. So thanks for having us here today. 
Yeah, I'm definitely guilty as charged on that front. Okay, Shane, why don't you give the quick overview of what Dacity does? For sure, for sure. Um, awesome to be here and kind of share a panel with, with so many other great folks and, and intelligent minds. Uh, Dacity, we help D2C brands specifically uh, to make better data-driven decisions and find the insights that, that they need to drive profitable growth and, and ultimately accelerate growth for their brand. Uh, now, most e-commerce brands are, are dealing with a state of data that's not such a great one, uh, which is they're using a variety of different tools. Think Shopify, Amazon, Google Analytics, ad platforms, Recharge, Clavio, and a whole bunch more, uh, all of which have their own kind of proprietary reporting. Uh, now, this creates a lot of challenges when it comes to figuring out where is performance coming from, being that they need to uh, effectively take data from all of these different tools and try to compile it together themselves in spreadsheets. It takes a whole lot of time. There's always a human error element to it. So at Dacity, we extract the data from all of these different tools and platforms. We centralize it into a working data model, and then we visualize it into a variety of dashboards that are built specifically for D2C brands to help them understand their best performing sales and marketing channels, customer groups, and ultimately where they should continue to focus and invest resources to drive, uh, to drive growth. So that's us here at Dacity. Uh, and yeah, once again, uh, excited to be here. Awesome. All right. So I think let's dive right into it um, and get to the good stuff. So I think everybody's aware at this point that we're going to see a massive influx of traffic during this holiday season. And what I'd love to start the conversation off with today is what can I put in place now that will really set me up for not only that huge spike, but then also leading me into next year. So John, why don't you kick us off? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, so at a high level, um, kind of the way I think about, about an online store is I think of it as a funnel and I think about it as an equation as well. So you're just talking about a huge influx of traffic. Some of these are gonna be returning customers that are familiar with your brand and some of them are gonna be brand new people that found you via search engine, uh, text message, email, uh, word of mouth. And so they're going to land on your website and they're going to be brand new. So you got to cater to both these audiences. Um, if you think about this, this big influx of traffic, there's two levers that you can pull uh, when they land on your online store in terms of what you can do uh, to make the most of it and give them a great experience. And the two sort of e-commerce levers are number one, what's your conversion rate? So how can you get a higher percentage of, of people that land on your website to actually order the conversion rate? And the other one is average order value. So if they're you know, gonna order something that's $30, how can you encourage them and provide them value to order something that's say $50? If you increase your conversion rate and you increase your average order value, um, it's gonna have a huge, huge positive impact on, on your bottom line. So the next question is like, okay, I have all this traffic coming in. Uh, how do I pull those two levers? And the big answer, especially from my perspective and where I spend my time is, is how can we personalize this online store? to make it relevant for each person. So um, you can use personalization apps out there. It's certainly the category that we play in. The, the, the reason um, I bring this up is because you can personalize your website based on where the user is coming from. So if you're doing a big text message blast, you can have a key parameter in your URL. So people that enter your web store like that, you can then personalize it based on where they came from or a paid ad uh, on Facebook, Instagram, email. Um, so that's one big thing. Make the website relevant uh, based on where the user came from. And then making great product recommendations is huge. A lot of stores don't come with that by default. You may or may not be doing it. If you're not making great product recommendations, you're leaving a huge amount of money on the table and you're really dropping the ball when it comes to servicing your customers. So like three great examples of this would be somebody lands on a product page. They may click to add to cart on that, but if they scroll down, you wanna do recommended products on your product page to get them to engage, which will increase that conversion rate and, and recommend something else they might like. When they add something to the shopping cart, that's another great sales opportunity. At that point, you know what they like. You have an opportunity to make great product recommendations again. So if you throw the you know, black t-shirt in there, pair it with the black beanie as well. So people appreciate uh, product recommendations. And then uh, another big one would be this idea of upselling. If somebody buys like one hoodie, uh, when they click add a cart, uh, personalize that experience and recommend that they upgrade to something that's like a bundle. Get like the hoodie bundle or the holiday pack. Um, and the user doesn't have to opt into that, but a lot of pe people will opt into it and appreciate that you made it an option at that moment in time. 
Yeah, definitely. It's been interesting also to hear, especially with younger generations, they want, like they ask for those things a lot and they expect that experience. Um, so personalization is definitely gonna be a big win. Shane, where do you see things of like how we can turn this big boon this holiday season into a big win for next year? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it go, kind of goes without saying that this is the most valuable time of the year for most, if not all, direct-to-consumer brands. Uh, I think it would be short-sighted of a lot of brands to think of this as, you know, we just need to do really well during this time period and not think about uh, the possibility of creating solid long-term relationships or uh, developing and further developing those funnels that John talked about that can lead to long-term results. I mean, it's impossible or virtually impossible for you to be able to convert all of the traffic that's going to be coming to the site during the holiday season. That being said, you could set yourself up for a solid relationship with them down the road uh, and a relationship that is, uh, has a lot of potential to generate additional revenue for you. So what this would look like is making sure you've got the appropriate capture points up for emails, phone numbers to build your email list, build your SMS list. Uh, if you have something like a rewards program, uh, make sure that, you know, you've got the appropriate uh, kind of sign up kind of CTAs in the right spots to get customers to uh, engage with you in that way. Um, I think one thing that we saw particularly valuable. So um, you know, before Dacity, I worked at a company named Smile.io, who I think has been a part of, um, you know, webinars with us in the past, um, which is a fantastic rewards program for, for Shopify stores. Uh, if you run a rewards program, um, what you can do is run some special like point campaigns to encourage customers to buy, but also potentially just to sign up during the holiday season to sign up for the program. Uh, this is a great strategy for a premium brand that might not want to do a ton of discounting. Um, ultimately, it's going to lead you to a lot of customers with big points balances, uh, which are a fantastic remarketing tool for, for the following year. So uh, if I was to sum it up, I would say, make sure that you're not thinking of it just short term, think a little bit longer term. What can we do with this traffic outside of, you know, all the great recommendations that John mentioned to help them convert and increase their AOV? What can we do to ensure that uh, we can get some of that traffic back moving into the new year? Um, the last piece that I would add is, you know, focus on delivering a delightful experience during the holidays. I can't think of a worse experience than, you know, purchasing something for yourself during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, purchasing a gift for someone else and, and ultimately not receiving it or taking an incredibly long time, not having great communication with the brand. Uh, have your strategy not locked in. Make sure that you deliver on that strategy. Uh, a great experience is, is one of the best ways to get customers to come back and buy from you again. Uh, one term that I've always really liked or, or sentence that I really like to use is you're going to need customers three months from now, six months from now, nine, 12, 18 months from now. So make sure that you're treating all of them in the appropriate way to uh, ensure that they will come back and, and buy from you again, or maybe buy from you the first time if, if they didn't buy this holiday season. Yeah, definitely with all that traffic, there's many, many opportunities outside of the next couple of months. Adam, how are you all seeing this over at Root? Like how can we really leverage this holiday season? Yeah, I mostly have to emphasize what everybody else says. It's a big influx, but it's not just about the holidays, right? People are discovering your brand, they're discovering your products, they're discovering your store. They may not be buying something for the holidays, maybe buying something for themselves or taking notes for, you know, maybe a more appropriate time that they want to buy your stuff. And so it has to be both making sure that this is scalable and awesome and successful for everybody whose holidays are hinging on getting something awesome from your store as well as in the future. And so what we're seeing with that um, really revolves around what happens after that customer makes a purchase. Things are insane right now with, with carriers. Uh, we have seen since March that they have been overloaded. Major carriers have dropped their guarantees. So they can't even tell you exactly when it's gonna get there. They'll just do their best. And this is leading to a lot of uncertainty with those customers. But unfortunately, customers don't split that in their minds. They don't say, well, this is UPS's fault, but I still love this brand. Unfortunately, 84% of customers blame a retailer after delivery goes poorly to the point that they will not return to that brand after a bad delivery experience. And so you have to take accountability for that. And that's going to affect you both in this holiday season as well as in the future. So you can imagine as orders are piling up, as those carriers are dealing with all these uh, you know, this influx of orders, we've basically launched forward two years in e-commerce in terms of volume and carriers weren't ready for it. That's your customer's experience with your brand is UPS delivering it to them. So make sure that you've got things in place, make your policies very clear on your website, get those banners up there that, you know, warn them about delivery windows and, and when they need to order that on time so you can avoid that frustration in the first place. Um, but then on the, on the back end of that, um, even if, you know, they've, they've made that purchase and, you know, we had success and they've, they've purchased something now, make sure that that experience doesn't ruin it so they can come back to you and buy from you again later next year. Um, because 
maybe a few of the other brands that they bought from didn't have things in place and they were left to just deal with UPS or FedEx or the postal service on their own. And it left a bad experience versus when they had something go wrong with you, they had tools and policies and, and things put in place to make it really easy and self-service to get those issues, issues resolved so they could get their holidays back on track. Little Johnny or Janie could get the present in time from grandma all the way across the country who wasn't able to see them at the family reunion this year because it was canceled. All those emotions come to the surface. Just make sure you've got something in place to take care of it because what happens during shipping and delivery absolutely matters and it's reflective of your brand. Yeah, definitely. Especially if it's someone's first purchase, they're really going to have that expectation moving forward. So Allison, how, how can we leverage this holiday season to be as big as possible? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And, and, you know, Adam, you called out something interesting. You're like, hey, you know what, we literally like leap, leapt forward two years in e-commerce, you know, throughout the time that we've all also too been in the pandemic. And I think that one of the things that, that really resonates for me um, specifically, like as a mom and as a consumer too, um, when I'm thinking about like the holiday season and how the pandemic has changed and shifted my own behavior, is that the holiday season also too, that influx of traffic, it started earlier. I think we probably all are, are seeing that, we're feeling that. Um, and in reality, what you have to be able to do in order to be able to accommodate that traffic influx, take advantage of an extended holiday season too that started earlier, is think through first and foremost, where are people really spending the most of their time right now? You know, like I know we were taught, we were kind of laughing earlier before we kicked things off and we were like, hey, all these conferencing platforms, like we're Zoom surfing, we're back to back to back on meetings. Like we're all spending a lot of time on a screen and our adoption of being able to spend even more time on, on our mobile screen is incrementally higher too. You know, I look at my report and I'm like, oh, you're 29% up this week. Thumbs up for my mobile usage, right? Um, but we're also to seeing even here at Attentive that conversions are increasing even more so and even exponentially faster than what a lot of the Forrester and the Gartner studies had previously shown uh, for mobile e-commerce conversion. So quick question actually to, uh, to you guys that are here uh, on, the, on the webinar with us today. What is I guess maybe your favorite social app that you spend a lot of time on. And Jeremy, what, what is what is yours first? Oh man, uh, I'm not ready for this. I feel like I'm old school, but I still spend a lot of my time on, actually I have a little bit of a change. I spend a lot of my time on YouTube these days. I used to spend a lot more time on Instagram, but I find myself like in those five minute gaps watching YouTube videos before Instagram now. That's interesting, that's cool. I find myself on YouTube a lot too. I love the how to's, um, mm -hmm. Adam, how about you? Yeah, I'm still an Instagram junkie. Uh, as they've they've expanded, there's so much. You know, it's like you can get the short videos with Reels. You can get the lengthier videos with IGTV, which kind of you know steals from a bit of the YouTube audience and everything like that. It just seems like kind of the the best of everything right now, except for maybe uh, <coughs> censorship. Oh, <laughs> cool. Um, John, thank you. Yeah, I guess it kind of depends on if it's like for business or personal, but I, I've kind of curated my Twitter for like all business related stuff. So other like founders and startups and stuff like that. Um, so I go to Twitter quite a bit um, for that sort of content. And I, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn as well for that same. But then like on my personal side, it's like I spend most of my time uh, in Instagram for sure. And then sometimes I'll post my photos like to my Facebook account too. And then I'll go check out the activity over there as well. Yeah. Um, but then like chatting with my friends, it's like, I do use my messages app on my iPhone a lot for just like talking with somebody directly. For sure. For sure. Shane, how about you? Yeah, de definitely got to be Twitter. Um, I'm a huge sports fan myself. So, uh, you just get all the up to, up to the minute updates, uh, related to that, but, but also a good mix of, um, you know, kind of influencers from like our industry as well. Um, being able to quickly digest a, a lot of their intelligence in, in short formats. Pretty nice for me. Uh, I try to stay out of the threads quite a bit though, because they can be pretty depressing at times. I think sometimes Twitter is not so great on that side of things. Um, outside of that, uh, Facebook Messenger. So I don't have the Facebook app on my phone, but I've got the Facebook Messenger app and I use that for you know group chats with my family, group chats with my friends. Um, so I use both of those quite frequently. Cool. cool. Yeah. So I have a question for the broader group, and then I'm going to go into a couple of different a couple of different strategies for brands. But have you guys uh, raise your hand if you think that you're using more of your social apps right now because we're home more, right? 
All right. Perfect. Yeah. So I think that that's kind of the obvious. There's an obvious place to start. We're all seeing like a, a really big influx in traffic to all of our customer sites day in and day out. Um, but in the reality, the reality is a lot of your customers are actually on different social channels um, a lot more. Um, so one of the things that um, that is, is awesome to be able to do is to be able to think about like acquisition strategies uh, from those social channels. So with text, you can do things like a little pixel where you can embed it in your career Creative. You can tap to join. You can swipe up to join. We power a lot of those for our customers here at Attentive. Um, but then even when you're thinking about like the influx of the social usage of consumers coming then and hitting your site, even if you don't acquire from those channels, you really need to do something that, that John and I talked about actually a few days ago, which is like you need to make sure that your site is also eloquent around that traffic because a social user is going to want to be able to communicate even if you're acquiring for text in a very different way versus you know, somebody that comes in from like Google as an example. So we're looking at a lot of our customers like dorsal bracelets that where they're having this influx of site traffic come in from social channels specifically. And then we're changing up, not just necessarily the acquisition strategy for running a text program and acquiring a new text subscriber, but thinking through more thoughtfully, what does that experience need to look like then with their first message because of that too. So it goes even well beyond like, how do you iterate your site? But also too, how do you carry on conversations that are meaningful from that very first touch point, especially in something like text? Cause it again, is so intimate, you know, like you guys have all said, like you communicate communicate with your family and friends in your text app. We talked about that earlier. Um, so it, it really does go beyond just like what happens from site. It goes into what, what do you take from an intent perspective into action that really carries through with a thoughtful process throughout the way. Um, so our customers that do that see, I mean, amazing results here. And if you're not thinking about mobile first as part of that holiday strategy, I think you're well behind the game at this point. Yeah. Definitely. I think uh, it's going to be really interesting to see just the vault. We've seen the mobile traffic just from traffic and dollar amounts just continually hit that kind of hockey stick growth. And I can't imagine how much farther it's going to go up this year. Um, so thinking about that, just knowing that the shipping carriers are going to be super overwhelmed this year. How can we stay ahead of that? How can we, especially when talking about like setting good kind of expectations, as well as good relationship with customers, like what can we do to help mitigate some of the potential issues that have popped up? So Adam, do you wanna quickly take us through what some best practices yeah. might be? This, this one's mostly gonna be my domain, but I'll be interested to hear what, uh, what the others can kind of contribute to this. But yeah, first and foremost, just communicate that, communicate that you're dealing with it. And there was a question that came up in the chat that I responded to, but do it in a positive way, right? Say order before, you know, this date to get it before Christmas, instead of saying, um, you know, warning, UPS sucks and make sure that you order now or you might not get it in time. You know, put it in a positive way that actually drives people to, to do something quickly instead of maybe scaring them away from even engaging in an online purchase. But mostly set yourself up for that. Expect it. Expect that things are going to be wrong. Expect that you're going to have an influx of people asking, where is my order? Where's my stuff? When is it going to get here? Why hasn't it shipped yet? And make sure that you're dedicating resources to be ready to deal with that because, I mean, it's always a big question. Where is my order continues to be the single biggest question that goes into to, you know, e-commerce brands. And so make sure that you're prepared for that and that it's going to exponentially increase. Um, communicate it, put it in your FAQs, put it in your policies, make sure that customers understand, hey, what is your policy? Are you going to take care of the packages if they get stolen or if they get lost or damaged? Communicate that and let them know the process to get a hold of you. If you don't, make it very clear. You know, we see a lot of brands that have a statement that say we cannot be held responsible for packages after they leave our warehouse or things like that. And you need to work with UPS. The clearer that you can be for where that customer needs to go, the better it's it's going to be. But just like anything else, you know, ounce of prevention beats a pound of cure. Be ready for that. Anticipate it. Obviously, I can plug route. Um, we can talk, uh, you know, in more detail about that another another time. But go check out route.com. We got solutions both to keep customers informed every step of the way with where their stuff is, just based off the tracking numbers you're already sending to them, um, as well as, like I've said before, self service tools to be able to resolve those issues if you get them in place uh, before the holidays, so customers can do that. But just plan for it and make sure that you're allocating resources to be able to act accordingly. Yeah, definitely. Plan and then contingency plan and then contingency plan. Um, Allison, anything on the SMS side that brands can think of to really just stay ahead of it on the communication side of things? 
Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, I'm about to throw out the good old golden rule, do unto others as you would have done unto you, right? Um, so I think that that boils down into just being proactive. You know, how are we continuously updating information and informing customers on what's actually happening with the purchases that they've made throughout the way? Um, you know, I, um, as a consumer, got four different text alerts actually yesterday from Overstock uh, on all of my orders that I had placed, uh, which for those of you that are interested, I bought a lot of inflatables for our yard. It was fun. Um, but I had placed all these different separate orders. And I got a text like literally on a long code from a different long code, a different long code, a different long code, a different long code. And I was, I actually got a little annoyed because I was like, I can't even look at my holistic order here. It's like order number, order number, order number. So one of the things that um, we oftentimes are encouraging our customers to do, especially as we're looking at like the shipping season and the traffic season is not only start to think about raising visibility towards what your shipping deadlines are in different ways versus just having it on your site. Maybe think about putting it into your email program, your text program, maybe even on your social channels too in your paid ads, um, but also to making sure that when somebody does place an order that you're being even more thoughtful about what's happening with that order every step of the way and doing it in a way that is convenient for customer engagement not so fragmented for customer engagement. So in the case that I just shared with Overstock, like I bought my orders from their app. Um, and went through, bought four different things in one transaction, but I got four separate texts for every item that was being delivered. And again, it was all from different long codes. Um, think about if you are gonna do that strategy where you got somebody that's buying on mobile or buying on an app, um, if you're gonna text them an alert, try to centralize it. Use it underneath one dedicated short code because that's just such a better customer experience where you're not being so fragmented on order updates and don't do it five, six times a day. I got so many alerts yesterday. It was actually kind of annoying, um, but do it in a way that's thoughtful while also too informative at the same time um, is the best thing that we can advise our customers on those types of transactional text updates post-purchase. Definitely. And for anyone who isn't familiar, do you mind just quickly giving the like high level overview of what long code is and maybe what a short code yeah. is? Yeah, so a long code is um, basically something that has a, um, a 10 digit number, essentially. So, you know, if you can think about like your area code, like mine is 678, and I won't give you the rest of my cell phone number, but like, you know, that that is a long, a long code in, in the text messaging industry. Um, a short code, and more specifically, a dedicated short code is a five digit number. Um, that, sent, that essentially not only just has like better deliverability than a long code, but it also too allows you to have more versatility in how your brand is recognized on that dedicated short code because you're carrying your own reputation. Um, so we always encourage that with all of our customers um, because not only does it have better deliverability, but you can centralize things like marketing, service, transactional all underneath that short code and really make the best use of not distracting away to different long code orientations and numbers. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, so kind of in this vein of talking about marketing, um, there's so many marketing channels out there and if a brand's doing something really well, why, what, like, what was the value of them investing in additional marketing channels, even if they're seeing positive returns? So Allison, I'm going to throw it right back to you. Oh yeah, cool. Um, so, um, Resident email geek here. I spent 10 years in email um, and uh, then turned into kind of, you know, that that mobile that mobile angle. I think probably right as like consumer behavior started to shift um, to text and to mobile. You know, the average email opening rate these days is about 19 percent. Um, and so if you start to think about like how often you grab your phone throughout the day, how often you're looking at like any text that you get, you come through average open rate um, on average for a text specifically is in the 90th, 90th, 90 percentile plus. Um, so if you think about like really where to invest dollars, um, text is an easy one to think about because the open rate is incrementally higher. Um, oftentimes too, you're looking at increased conversion and increased click through rates just because of the higher open rate. Um, but most of the time, people know that if you're going to send them a text, it better be well worth something, too. Um, and so text is, again, just such an easy place to look at being um, our customers that are working with us here at Attentive are seeing at least 18.5% of total online revenue be attributed to their text program. And where you think about where email stood maybe even five years ago on the percentile of coverage with email, having a text program be new and become that amount of net new revenue for your brand and cover that much online revenue 
it's incredible. Like that just says something about our own bad behavior. I think sometimes too, as consumers and as people is how much we're spending on our phone. So. Yeah. Wow. 18% of revenue is a pretty considerable amount. Uh, so same question to you, John. So if I already have successful marketing programs, why invest in another one? Well, I, I mean, really, you should invest your money into whichever one's working, but you don't want to uh, more money into that channel um, until you get diminishing returns. Um, but you don't want to avoid exploring new channels. So I hear a lot about a lot about TikTok as being like a, a great channel to find new customers on it. Text is a great example. Um, but you definitely should make data oriented decisions um, in terms of your ROI on your spend and then invest more in those areas while exploring some others and then monitoring. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, the thing that we think about at our company where I spent a lot of my career focusing on is like the experience that takes place once you hit the website. There's so much money being spent on Instagram ads, Facebook ads, and these other channels. Uh, you got to ask yourself, like, where am I driving all these new users to and all these eyeballs to? It's like, by and large, they're almost all of these channels are driving to the online store, the dot com. So um, I know it's a channel oriented question about getting new customers, but I can't help myself to think about where are we driving these customers? And it's the website. And so a, a big theme, uh, two themes I've, I've heard is like communication. So how can we communicate with our customers uh, throughout the buying process? And in the chats here, I saw a lot of talk about like the checkout too. So Rebuy is a personalization engine, as you know, it's a recommendation engine, as you know. Uh, I emphasize that only uh, to, to say that that connects with uh, a whole suite of merchandising tools that you can use on your online store. So we are a no code platform that allows you to message the user at the right time in the right place. So for example, uh, one of our uh, most powerful integrations, it only works on Shopify Plus, but is the ability to do upsells and cross-sells directly in checkout. Using our no-code platform, uh, you can, and whatever technique you want to use, it's fine. This is a general level concept. It, it has to do with communication, but you landed the user on a product page, they clicked to add a cart, they might have saw a recommendation, added something else. Now they're in checkout. This is your opportunity to message them and potentially uh, upsell some uh, shipping insurance uh, to give them the peace of mind to actually convert on that. Um, another thing brands are doing is they're, they're saying, uh, I wanna uh, upsell or add on uh, a warranty. Um, you can make additional money off that and then also increase conversions if that's what somebody wants to, to do. And then you can either write custom code or use a platform like ours to do messaging that says, oh, because you have this, um, you know, add this extra item, uh, you know, because you're at a certain dollar threshold uh, to unlock free shipping. Um, so you can use our sort of like no code platform. You can actually return based on rules, i.e. what they have in their cart and that sort of thing to do tailored messaging just for that particular user that can be the make or break between whether or not they choose to complete that uh, order or abandon that checkout. Yeah, definitely. And the more stuff that they buy, the more that they spend, the more profitable those ads are. So Shane, do you want to just quickly run us through, like, I've got a couple of really healthy, profitable marketing channels. Why invest in another channel or why continue to expand my marketing portfolio? On mute. We were just talking about Zoom issues and staying on mute, even though we've been using it for like eight months and here I go and do that right away. So um, I think simply put, if you want to grow faster, you need to be in a variety of marketing channels. Um, I, I think... It's important to not sleep on retention marketing efforts as well. Uh, I see a ton of investment going into the front end. Uh, and to John's point, um, you know, basically the, the conversion funnel, what you're looking at to grow the business is a combination of the amount of traffic you can drive, the conversion rates that you see, the average order value on those conversions, and then your ability to retain those customers and turn them into customers with high lifetime value. So it's critical to make sure that you've got a really diverse, multifaceted approach when it comes to your marketing strategy. I think if you're too focused and you're too like solely emphasizing one channel, uh, you do a couple of things wrong. You open the door up to competition. Who's going to be able to drive awareness faster through all of these other channels um, and you potentially lose market share. Um, that market share is going to allow them to become more efficient and maybe end up pricing you out. 
Um, I also think if you're too focused on one channel, you become really vulnerable to changes in that platform. So John said, everybody's, you know, seeing that TikTok is driving a lot of value right now. Um, what if a brand dro- like, you know, starts to vote 80, 90% of their budget towards TikTok and they make a platform change or some legislation comes down and the whole, platform's cha- the whole platform changes and your ability to make money in the platform changes. You really don't want that vulnerability if you're trying to grow a, a fantastic brand. Um, there's so many different initiatives that brands can engage in. Um, I, I mean, there, there's not too many mysteries when it comes to that. Outside of email, there's SMS, there's different ad platforms, there's affiliate and influencer marketing. Uh, I think reach out to the communities that exist for merchants to figure out what others in your vertical are having success with. So look at those communities like the Shopify Plus Facebook community, e-commerce fuel, others that are um, you know basically just stock full of experts in your particular vertical that are more than willing to lend a helping hand um, in, in that scenario. Scenario. And I think in addition to that, uh, when you're trying out those new strategies, just test. I think especially with ad platforms, such low barriers to entry to get started there. Set yourself a benchmark of what you want to see on like a return on ad spend or ROI on the platform. Benchmark it against your current strategies. Um, and you can see what the performance is in those channels almost immediately. Test them out. Um, you know, you can always test and you can always pull back in, in those areas. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. I, w- I would just like to, to add to that, this idea of like a channel is your existing customer base. Cause it, yeah. it, it's honestly, and, and Shane, you know, touched on that specifically, which I appreciated. And our entire business is founded on that. The, the, the entire founding idea behind Rebuy is, is Rebuy is based on the concept that your best customer is your existing customer. 100%. So when I was doing sales early in my career, that was an epiphany to me. I'm like, wow, I'm always trying to get out all these new customers. You know, and somebody reminded me that they, they go, oh, well, don't forget that your best customer is your existing customer. So remember that unless you're a brand new brand, you had people that shopped with you last Christmas. Don't forget about them as a, you know, a marketing channel, reaching out to them on whatever medium, you know, email and text being a great example for existing customers. Um, so yeah, get new customers, get exposure, spend to acquire, but don't forget to uh, remarket your products to your existing customer base. It's, it's core to a high quality business for sure. Yeah, definitely. And especially a lot of a lot of money to be made during this time period for people coming back to buy again. So considering that we are two weeks out, uh, people are probably putting their final plans in, wrapping everything up, make sure that everything is really tight. What is one thing that you would recommend that somebody deploys in the next two weeks to just really make the most out of this time period? So Shane, I'm going to put you, throw it back to you quickly. Yeah, sometimes I think the best recommendations in these areas are often the simplest. And we kind of talked about this before, Jeremy. Make sure that you have enough inventory on hand to meet the demand that you're going to see during the holiday season. I cannot stress it enough. Think of yourself as a consumer. Put yourself in a consumer's shoes. Have you ever gone to a site, looked at a product, and it says, hey, leave your email, be notified when it's in? Nobody ever does that. It never happens. Make sure that you have enough inventory to meet the demand that you're expecting. Look at uh, the seasonality of what you saw last year when it comes to how much you sold. Um, add in kind of the addition of what you're expecting given you know just the increase in sales that you've likely seen throughout this year and come up with an assumption for, for how much inventory you're going to need to meet that demand. Uh, you're just leaving a ridiculous amount of revenue on the table if you can't service those customers. So uh, I would say in addition to everything we've talked about, about fantastic communication when it comes to shipping, giving customers lots of ways to get in touch with you, making sure you're staffing up your support team and training them to handle this, the types of requests that they're going to see. Make sure that you're doing the basics right with have enough supply to meet the demand that is inevitably going to be there. Otherwise, you're just leaving a bunch of revenue on the table. Yeah, I actually went shopping yesterday and somebody missed out on me buying like five things because it wasn't in stock. Exactly. Um, so Allison, we've got two weeks left. What's the one thing that every brand should be thinking about? All right, so find ways to cut through the noise by implementing strategies of surprising and delighting too. Um, so, um, you know, I think that, uh, again, like we're all uh, oh, very aware that like our own increase in online consumption has, has you know, been dramatically uh, impactful in our lives during COVID too, whether we're connecting with friends or, or shopping more or browsing content more. Um, so during the holiday season, since it is drug out a little bit longer this year too, um, thinking about ways that you can connect in a way that is meaningful and tangible specifically with your customers on something that that goes beyond just um, your channel strategy too. So um, one of the things that um, we're doing here at Attentive is we're launching text for our customers that are net new. We do it in three to five business days. 
allows you to be able to test something new throughout the holiday time and pick up on a new channel. But outside of that, for a lot of the customers that we work with today, we're also to making sure that we are, if we can implement that integration between our platform and their customer service platform, because we have a ton of those, um, we're getting it out the door because just like what you guys have said, like the products are out of stock, inventory has changed. That means that the customers that are engaging with you need to be able to find the best avenue forward to get their questions answered in real time as well. And there's no easier way to do that sometimes than just texting to an agent, um, essentially that is also to able to provide you information on when is that product can be back in stock just as a simple example so um, again cut through the noise look at mobile first and be able to use that as a way to surprise and delight via integrations that you can also to have with your customer service platform on the text channel yeah definitely customer support is going to be i wasn't expecting that to be such a theme here but I'm, I'm loving it okay adam two weeks out what's the one thing a brand should be thinking about doing uh <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, basically, it's go look at your go look at your customer journey, go look at your customer experience map, and make sure that it includes details about what is happening with that customer after that package leaves your warehouse. Right? Of course, everything that I'm going to say has to do with post purchase experience, but that really, time and time again, has been proven. That's what customers care about. Right? You can you can build the wrong ads, and then when you create the right ones, you'll get those customers eventually. Right? You could have maybe not the best experience. I mean, John's whole business is testament to that. You could have had a successful business for a while, but once you introduce personalization and things like that, you can get better and you didn't really kill anything prior to that. But if you mess up shipping and delivery or you let the carrier mess up shipping and delivery after somebody has given you money, statistically speaking, that is the best way for that customer to never come back to you again. It is a very fragile time. So go look at your strategy, go look at your plan and make sure that you've got something in place. Again, whether it's more staff to handle those calls, whether it's a clear policy for how you're going to replace those orders out of pocket if they get stolen or if they're missing, or at least just clearly state that you're not going to do that so that your customers know what to expect. But don't let your customer experience journey or map just go from customer purchases, we ship the order, they receive the order because there is still a whole world of stuff that goes on from that customer's point of view. It could include, you know, Allison's conversation about, am I having text conversation with the client throughout them, letting them know where their stuff is through that. It could absolutely be an email strategy, sending them emails, letting them know when their um, package reaches various points in the shipping journey. But do not neglect that because things will go wrong. And for those customers that go wrong and it's not a good experience, they're not going to come back. Yeah. That first expectation really matters. Um, so John, we got one thing to do in two weeks. What should we be focusing on? Yeah. Um, as a last minute sort of thing, um, and based on interactions with thousands of merchants that use our platform, the one thing I would recommend is that you upsell and you cross sell. And the two locations that we see the biggest uptake rate on would be an add to cart triggered upsell, huge sales opportunity. At that moment, you know exactly what the customer wants. That's an opportunity to make a great recommendation into something that's even better because you know what they want. So an add to cart triggered upsell. And for the cross sell, if you're on Shopify Plus, uh, I think that that's one of the best places on the online store to make a great product recommendation uh, for an add-on or a cross-sell. It is the ultimate funnel on your online store. If you're on Shopify Plus, you can edit your checkout file and you can make great product recommendations in checkout. Um, there are brands making millions of dollars in extra annual revenue uh, due to that integration location alone and using our automated product recommendations to let data dictate uh, which products pair well with what they're about to buy. And so again, I would just emphasize, make sure you're upselling and cross-selling. People appreciate product recommendations and especially during the holiday time. If you're buying for yourself, you may know exactly what you want and still appreciate recommendations. If you're buying for somebody else, uh, you really do appreciate a great recommendation. And so I'd say upsell and cross-sell, and those are my two uh, uh, heaviest hitting integration locations based on interactions with thousands of merchants that use our platform. 
Very cool. I actually want to jump in on this one just because I, I love these types of questions before we get to Q&A. My recommendation would be to set up a segment of everybody who's already bought this holiday season and send them a specific message selling to them again. I think so many merchants just kind of like try to sprint to the end of the race and get to that either BFCM promo or whatever their big event is, but then don't think to sell to those customers again. If they've already bought from you this holiday period, they're very, very interested. And whether it's gifting, whether it's um, buying more for more, more gifting, or it's even just treat yourself moment. Like I think it's a, a really big oppor opportunity, especially because you spend so much time and effort acquiring them. Um, that's a really big opportunity. Okay, so with the last 10 minutes, I wanna jump into Q&A. Um, first question we have, uh, and John, I'm gonna throw this to you first is, are there any upsell, cross-sell emails and recommendations uh, for anybody who's not using Shopify Plus that you would recommend? Oh yeah, <clears throat> huge opportunities across the board, uh, regardless of whether or not you use Plus. Um, I would say one of the top uh, locations to think about is the shopping cart. And what's really cool about the shopping cart is when somebody's on the homepage, you're not 100% sure what they're interested in. When they're looking at a product page, you're getting closer. But when they click add to cart, you know what they're interested in. So uh, regardless of what Shopify plan you're on, you can do integrations with the shopping cart, whether it's a cart flyout or a cart drawer, um, or it's a full page cart, which in the world of Shopify is like your slash cart page. Um, in either case, uh, the user has told you a, a lot about what they care about. And so you have the data you need to execute either against using like AI or uh, rule set based recommendations um, because of that insight that you have at that moment in the shopping cart. Very cool. Anybody else on the panel want to take this one on site in messaging? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a, a little bit tangential. tangential. Um, but one of the things that we do at Route is that in, in the consumer's app that you can download to aggregate all of your orders in one place, you know, track everything so that you can have updates just coming from the Route app telling you where all your stuff is, is we make sure that the brand has a branded experience in there, right? And so as we look at just during shipping and delivery, that's a great time to be using that very engagement that, that John and Jeremy have talked about, right? Is these people have bought from you once, that doesn't mean they're done, right? It could be that while they're tracking that package, they realize, hey, I bought this for my dad. This would also be great for my father-in-law. This would also be great for my uncle or for my buddy. And then go back and buy more of those. I literally did the same thing after the Dodgers won the World Series. I went and bought the hat. And then a day later, I went and bought something else. And then a day later, I bought something else for my wife. And, you know, it all, you know, unraveled. And now I have like three different orders coming from Fanatics because I'm an idiot. But, um, you know, as I think about that, right, just make sure that you're keeping in touch with them during that stage because it could be before they've even received that thing that they they have that idea hey i want to go get that again and you can actually use the route app as a channel to promote um different op different uh promotions that you have or soon we'll have the opportunity to promote different products uh within there so that as users are watching that package uh travel across the map toward their house they're having a branded experience with you where they're able to actually see what else can i get from this brand how can i re-engage with them and using the route app as a channel to hop right back into the site and continue shopping. Um, so absolutely, there's ways that you can do it, even if you're not on Shopify Plus, even if you don't have those capabilities to do it in the cart or right in the moment of checkout, um, there's lots of different channels where, where you can take advantage of those very eager eyes and those very eager consumers to find other ways to do it. I mean, you can even do, do it over text with everything that, uh, that Allison uh, has been talking about. There's lots of ways to, to cross sell and upsell. Definitely. Anybody else want to take that or should we jump to the next one? Okay, cool. Um, so while we wait for more questions from the audience, one question that I have, what's the one metric that everybody, that you recommend everybody pays attention to this holiday season? So Shane, I'm going to kick it to you first. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it's it's a relatively simple one, but I think if, if you're looking for you know, one single metric, one thing to focus on. I think it's really getting an understanding and, and having knowledge of what your, your profit margin is on a per product basis. Um, and I think teaming that also with proper segmentation throughout your customer base. So uh, when it comes to margin, being able to get down to an understanding, and I mean, um, you know, typically brands are doing this in spreadsheets, slight plug for Dacity. We, we kind of automate the process of knowing what that margin is and volume sales of a particular product. 
But ultimately, being able to figure out where you have the most margin opportunities is going to give you the opportunity to run promotions on those items. I don't think any brand, um, unless it's like part of what they do, should be running a ton of site-wide strategies. I think you should have some featured items where you discount more heavily, uh, and those items should ultimately have you know higher margins for you. Uh, I think in addition to that, um, you know, looking at the product strategy and thinking about what products are we featuring based on the products that are bringing us customers who have the highest lifetime value. What's our historical data showing us that if somebody purchases X first, are they more valuable than someone who purchases y, purchases y first? In those situations, even if your margin's not as high, you have the ability to focus on the products that you know are going to bring you those sustainable lifetime customers. And I think that goes right back to our first question over how do we deal with this influx of traffic and how do we ensure that um, you know we help it uh, start off the year with a bang? It's making sure you're focusing on those products that again have those really solid margins. You're giving the promotions on those items. You know you're not necessarily going site wide, and you're looking at those that are. Um, you know, uh, have, are bringing you customers with high LTV. Very cool. Yeah. LTV, super important metric. All right, John, one important metric to really focus on this holiday season. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to jump on the <clears throat> margin bandwagon. Cause if you think about it, uh, I've been a merchant, um, uh, in my career, uh, and, and uh, if you sell $10 million worth of product, and it costs you $10 million to produce and fulfill that product, you have made $0 for the year. And so if you have a 50% margin, now you've made 5 million. If you have a 80% margin, you know, you've made 8 million on the $10 million figure. So uh, in a physical product based good, uh, in any, in any, when you're selling anything, like your cost of goods sold is such a big deal. Um, so it's like, yeah, I've sold a lot of product historically, um, and depending on which product you're selling, it may or may not, you know, have a positive impact on the bottom line. So that's core. So um, that's a great opportunity and something that we see in that whole upsell cross sell space is you may you may be selling a sort of loss leader or something that has you know a 10% margin on it, but if you compare that with a you know an add on product that has a 90% margin, now all of a sudden you know you do the math on that and you're having a huge, huge positive impact on your bottom line and running a profitable business, um, which is, which is such a huge deal. Like if, if it's all revenue and no profit, you're, you know, you're, you're stuck in one spot essentially. Um, so yeah, focus on your margins for sure. And focus on selling as many high margin products as you can. Uh, and if that is not your core product, then think about offering uh, add-on products that are high mar margin so you can hit that target and goal and get an economic model that, uh, that works and is profitable. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. I, sorry, I just wanted to kind of jump on the back of that, John. I, uh, I talk with merchants all the time. And one of the common themes that I come back with is somewhere along the lines that I think it's in this, um, you know, in this kind of modern world of D 2 C brands are getting invested in by PE and VC firms where profit has somehow become less sexy uh, all of a sudden. And everything that I've kind of learned through, through years of, of being involved with a variety of types of businesses is profit is really the lifeblood of your business. That's what's going to allow you to invest in additional marketing channels, allow you to hire more people, allow you to control your own growth. So never look at revenue growth as, as the be all and end all metric. Yes, it's important. Yes, PE firms and VCs and people who might want to buy your business are looking at that. But ultimately, if you want to scale something really incredible, you need to have a strong basis for profit so that you can reinvest in, in your own growth. Totally. Agreed. Allison, yeah. Allison, the one metric that everyone should focus on this yeah. holiday season. I think holiday season is a great time to be able to test out your theory around channel orchestration specifically. I think as marketers, like we've looked at like one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one types of communications with email and with mobile push with our customers. And we think that all channels kind of should be orchestrated in this sort of way. Use this holiday season to actually pay attention to what is consumer behavior by engagement and conversion rate actually say about what your channel strategy should be because you may be surprised at the result that you get from that and also to change some of your strategy around orchestration as you head into 2021 too. Um, I think we've sometimes fallen into this lie that says that if you don't open email then you do this but what if 
you flip that model on its head by looking at what's the return on investment that you're getting and what does your channel affinity strategy need to be in order to rethink your orchestration strategy too as a marketer. Definitely. Yeah. We pull in a bunch of brands and map this out for a couple of the brands we work with of like, what, how, what's the impact of all the different marketing channels. And it's, it's always a surprise of what people expected versus what actually happens. I figured you and Shane would be cool with that. I know I'm, I'm a big geek on that too, guys. So. Yeah. We love that stuff. All right, Adam, bring us home. What's the one metric that everybody should be focusing on this holiday season? Yeah, I'm guessing you've probably got margin figured out. You probably got profitability figured out. So I'm going to say, assuming all those things are in place and that you're you're happy with what's there, measure your customer experience, right? Because you could have an amazing product, you could have uh, an awesomely optimized store, but measure that customer experience. It could be CSAT, it could be looking at your customer lifetime value and actually determining if it's meeting your model. Are people repurchasing at the rate that you expected? And just measure measure exactly why they're not coming back or what the patterns are that are bringing people back and hone in on those because again we see it with amazon we see it with direct to consumer shops people are going to amazon where they can get just a better smoother checkout experience and smoother delivery experience they have confidence that if anything goes wrong with something on amazon amazon is going to override the seller and take care of it for them that's a whole lot of why people buy on amazon even if you've got a superior product even if you've got a cooler brand even if you've got an awesome humanitarian giveaway associated with your brand if I don't have confidence, is it going to get to me or that the experience is going to be subpar? I'm just going to go get the Chinese one from Amazon. So my recommendation is measure that experience, know what the factors are and pull those levers. Yeah, definitely. Always goal at the end of the day is always make customers happy. Well, really appreciate everybody taking the time. I really appreciate the panel. Um, we are at time. So unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, telling I'm getting, I'm telling, my team's telling I'm getting kicked off. But I really want to thank everybody for joining. I'm so excited for everybody's holiday. I truly do believe that this is going to be one of our biggest holidays ever. Um, and also just from my team is really a big special thank you to Sarah and Nikki who have been on all of these panels, make sure that everything runs smoothly. Um, I know that they are not in front of us here, but they have had the biggest impact in making all this happen. So thank you everybody. I'm really excited for this holiday season and hope it's the best, your best one yet.